distinguished uh, panels, highly revered and respected uh, participants. I've already been introduced, but I'm standing here not on my behalf, but on behalf of the Chief of Army Staff, Lebanon General Tuku Yusuf Bratai from Nigeria. He ought to be here, but for exigencies of uh, national duties elsewhere, he will have been here by himself. Uh, I have the directive to present his uh, address, then thereafter I can answer some questions. But suffice to say that the credit to this address goes to him and all the faults. I take responsibility. I have two other gentlemen from the Nigerian Army here, very senior officers, Commander Nigeria Army uh, Special Forces Command, Major General M.G. Ali, also the Commander of Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command, which is uh, newly established, Brigadier General Lassa. The person I'm representing, okay, I have to do this something. Uh, Lebanon General Tuku Yusuf Bratai, that is in the Nigerian Army Chief of Army Staff, who has been in the SADU for some four years or thereabout now, and has been directly responsible for galvanizing and commanding all military resources geared at resolving security issues in Nigeria, and particularly the menace of Boko Haram. I was only opportune and lucky to be one of his. Uh, field officers to carry through his vision and his strategy for combating security issues in Nigeria. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, terrorism the world over has assumed a household topic given its devastating desecration of the sanctity of human lives. It is common knowledge today that terrorism poses a grave danger to global security in its entirety as the world grapples with this global menace. From east to west, from north to south, no nation can be said to be immune from the threats of terrorism. Since the ugly incidents of the 9-11 Act of Terrorism we all record acts of terrorism have evolved st steadily and have continued to rise with negative impacts on global peace and security. The bad guys, you can see what they are in pictures from Al Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb to the Law Resistance Army in, the, in East Africa, ISIS terrorists all over the globe. Islamic uh, states in Greater Sahel, as we have in Mali, uh, down to Niger, and Boko Haram, which is, is our own homegrown terrorist group in Nigeria. These sects have adopted a strategy of violence, thereby pose threats to security of lives and property, in addition to threatening the legitimacy of nation states as well as regional peace and security. The Sahel region, I believe from the immediate past uh, speaker, we, we, we learned a lot from that and uh, the global uh, view, uh, strategic view of what happens within the general area down to Nigeria also. The Sahel region in West Africa has attracted the attention of international community due to prevalent and heightened activities of various terrorist groups within the region. Nigeria, partly in the Sahel region, especially the extreme northern part of Nigeria, has experienced a decade long of terrorism orchestrated by the Boko Haram sect. This sect claimed affiliation with Islamic State in Syria and has intensified its heinous activities. But this uh, affiliation started as far back as uh, March 2015. 
These dastardly acts ranges from kidnapping for ransom, violent attacks against public and military installations, as well as suicide bombing of soft targets using person and vehicle born improvised explosive devices. Others include use of massive improvised explosive device on main supply routes, bush paths, and entrance routes to their enclaves with devastating effects on both military, both military personnel, equipment, and civilians, including live socks. Counterterrorism operations are intelligence-led, thus necessitating the need to enhance our intelligence capability. This is talking about what the Nigerian army started doing to be able to, first of all, contain and also uh, decimate the Boko Haram group. As a result of special intelligence, as a result, special intelligence cells were created by the Nigerian army to beef up the existing intelligence detachments that were in existence. The objective was to coordinate intelligence operations and enhance the deployment of timely and actionable intelligence. The, the objective was to coordinate operations and enhance the deployment of timely and actionable intelligence. The Nigerian Army, with the assistance of international partners, was able to set up Joint Intelligence Fusion Center where information is analyzed and disseminated to formations for necessary combat actions. The deployment of these cells has provided greater insight into the terrorist activities, their leadership, finances, and sharing formula when ransoms are paid or looted items are carted and sold. The strategy of employing locals as sources, particularly disgruntled civilians who have lost all to their kids and kin who joined the terrorists and captured, as well as the radicalized members of the terrorist groups have enhanced our operations effectively against the terrorists. The, the, the pictures you see are products of intelligence on many wanted key Boko Haram personalities. Many of them through such sources have been uh, either captured or arrested far flung deep inside remote recesses in other parts of Nigeria, not necessarily right inside the northeastern part of Nigeria. Mindful of the seriousness of the challenge posed by the terrorist groups, concerted efforts were made to acquire a number of new platforms for the Nigerian army. We have received some platforms and armament with their corresponding ammunitions. This effort is complementary to the repair, retrofitting, reconfiguration, and modernization of some platforms in our infantry. I think later I will come to this. This notwithstanding, more needs to be done, and I believe as we share ideas on global best practices to tackle this canker worm, more strategies to fit our particular situation will unfold. I also pray that more hands will be on deck to support the Nigerian army in decapitating these zealots that are capitalizing on ignorance in the world's ungoverned regions to perpetrate their heinous crimes and activities. The Nigerian army's uh, strategy were observed, to fuse, were observed not to fuse without effectively supporting the troops within, within the entire theater. Four logistic bases were created to meet our logistic needs, consequent to which main repair groups and forward repair teams were also established for the maintenance of various platforms, equipment, and armament within the theater of operation. Nigeria Army adopted the concept of super camps, which entails concentrating large number of troops and equipment well in well-defended camps from where they will be required to plan their operations, to, to plan their operations. Troops 
in such super camps are also to conduct reasons and forge offensive operations using designated strike teams. These strike teams are to dominate all likely Boko Haram terrorists or Islamic State West African province as they are known now, their crossing points, admin area, or concentration areas. Or des uh, all these ones are designated as response areas, engagement areas, among others. That is, from the super camp, all those uh, points are designated response areas within which troops of the super camps are deployed to uh, are mobile, including their logistics, to be able to respond on meeting engagement rather than waiting for Boko Haram to attack them in their respective location. Truth welfare has also been accorded acceptable priority through timely disbursement of pay and allowances. I'm sure if somebody follow Nigerian situation on the social media, you see a lot of false and disinformation on some of these issues. But this is a very good forum for us to rub minds and get the correct situation. This has facilitated the maintenance of steady high morale and will to fight while acts of gallantry by troops are encouraged through incentives, including accelerated promotions of deserving personnel. I want to say that even me standing before you, I'm also a beneficiary. The President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria promoted me, Lieutenant General, some two months ago, just based on some of these activities. As a proven example, there are so many others who have benefited from such for the active roles and their loyalty to our dear country, Nigeria. Nigeria Army counterterrorism efforts and strategies have largely yielded positive results. And I, dis I, be I believe when we get to discussions, some of the issues raised by, the, by, uh, by Dr. Peter will also be uh, addressed. Yes, the Boko Haram is there, but the chat I saw that they are even more powerful than 2014-2015, I think is contestable, based on what is physically on ground and not what is uh, on paper. Towns and villages either too occupied by the terrorists have been recaptured, thereby diminishing their sphere of operations to a point where final and decisive onslaughts could be brought about on them to ensure their defeat. We know this won't come easy because we are not talking of uh, conventional operations, but we are modifying our strategies, we are making all our plans, and also adapting the same way they keep adapting to continue to make statements that don't think we are gone, we are still here. It is all those statements that are being uh, orchestrated in the popular world media and made to make it look as if Boko Haram is still firmly in charge of some territories in Nigeria. Uh, we'll discuss more on that later. These successes, however, have not been without some attendant challenges. One factor undermining counterterrorism efforts in the, in the West African sub-region or any other part of the world is lack of adequate cooperation among contiguous countries plagued by this menace. I'm not saying lack of cooperation. I'm saying lack of adequate. There is cooperation, but it can be better. That is what I'm trying to say here. We can also look at the overbearing Western influence and interest, which my colleague mentioned during his presentation within the region. Furthermore, the presence of vast areas of un ungoverned spaces in the Sahel region, coupled with porous international borders, constitutes a major challenge to the counterterrorism efforts in the West African sub-region and also particularly Nigeria. Such areas provide training grounds for the terrorists as well as proliferation of small and light weapons and trafficking in drugs. Worse still was the fall of Gaddafi and the massive looting of arsenals of war that 
are finding their ways into terrorist hands without control or tracking for lack of technical support from experts and developed as well as experienced countries in the war on terror, such as our chief host here, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. We appreciate all the support that are being offered, but we also believe more could be done. When all the plans were made and the coalition were dispersing ISIS from all the places where they were, where they were, it's not even in, even in real war, you can't kill all the adversaries or all the enemies, not to talk of in uh, asymmetric warfare. But when that was being done by the West or by the developed world, they never thought of where the rebounds will be carried. They were thinking of just making the baskets in all the places displacing ISIS, where they will fissure into. Nobody thought about it. And the effect today is what is happening in the Sahel and south of Sahara, where Nigeria is one of the countries. The war on terror in Africa and the Nigerian counterterrorism war against Boko Haram terrorists or Islamic State West African Conference, as well as, as they are Christian now in particular, is the developed world's war. Despite the fact that as a country, Nigeria will not compromise an inch of its territory. But if we look at it the other way, Nigeria has nothing to lose if it decides to cede the ungoverned territories away. After all, what is the population of the people that are in those ungoverned places? But that will not happen. We should also be mindful the terrorists are just looking for a hub to perfect their evil trade and go after Western interests in the region and beyond. This is debatable, but there are so many evidence to show that. The current terrorist urbanity in Africa are liking to spread grand chili pepper in the air, entering any open eyes. Sorry, as an African, we talk with a lot of uh, idioms. If, if, if granulated pepper is blown into the air, any eye that is open, the pepper will enter. I make bold to say that the open eyes are the Europeans and Americans that are everywhere in Africa that could be easily reached by these terrorists. The current ploy by some countries to deprive Nigeria and Nigerian armed forces from getting basic modern equipment to prosecute the war on terror need to be looked at. I need to bring this up. Why? Maybe we wouldn't have gotten to where we were today if, as at the time, Nigeria requested for the things and carrying its money to pick equipment that is needed to finally deal with these people when it started, if we were given such opportunity. But the West refused, just like they did during the Nigerian Civil War of 1967 to 70. The West refused to support Nigeria, even with our money to buy equipment. <coughs> what happens? We went to other places, we were also blocked. But now that the, the terrorism has festered, let me also go back. As at year 2015, it was everywhere that Nigeria must break. Nigeria will disintegrate before the end of 2015. And security uh, reports were written that no Westerner should go to Nigeria. Nigeria did not break. Nigeria was able to, through whatever means, sweat, blood, death, Nigeria remained. It was thereafter, after Nigeria refused to break, that was when we now started having flurry of NGOs, flurry of uh, training support, flurry. We should be sincere. The entire world should begin to think of it, that if smaller countries like Liberia and Sierra Leone were ravaged with conflict, and the Western world, particularly the United Kingdom and the United States of America, were amazed with the number of asylum seekers and refugees, the world should know that the entire populations of Liberia and Sierra Leone is not up to that of Maiduguri Metro Metropolitan Council alone. 
you are talking of where about 200 million people were looking for shelter, looking for support, looking for succor. The old world will never see rest. This type of actions made us to think locally. May it be that there's an orchestrated plan for Nigeria to break or for Nigeria to disintegrate. Or the world is just playing hide and seek game. Keep Nigeria in a perpetual state of flux. It will not be able to settle, it will not be able to realize its potentials, it will not be, the, the country will not be able to even take care of himself. Not to talk of taking the God-given leadership role it's supposed to take within the sub-Saharan Africa. But showing the disintegration of Nigeria, therefore, is a thing that must come to a halt, fought with health. What is happening today in Libya will be a child's play should Nigeria's disintegration be unwittingly pursued. As we are all seated here, we know what is happening across the Mediterranean with the number of people that are trying to cross to find succor in Europe, in America. If nothing concrete is done and we allow big centers of population to actually disintegrate. I think we, 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 we will be looking for more trouble. Therefore, this new war in Africa is wrongly christened. It is the third world war we are fighting inadvertently. Finally, let me seize this opportunity to implore all stakeholders at this summit to view terrorism as a wildfire in the midst of a whirlwind. This portends grave danger thus, requiring collective efforts and collaborations to address. A safer world knows no locality, knows no religion, color, or race, but a terrorized world will distinctively know which race is this, black race. This is Maghreb. This is West. This is black, this is color. But we should make sure we don't allow this to happen because the old world will be caught in a quagmire that will be difficult to undo. Nevertheless, I'm hopeful that the deliberations and interactions at this summit will provide fresh insights and arouse new enthusiasm in addressing the menace of terrorism globally. I also pray that those orchestrating these inner acts, particularly groups dreaming of Nigeria's collapse as a nation, should have a rethink. Its global repercussion should be food for thought for all of us. Uh, before I end my presentation, uh, I think I want to, on behalf of the Chief of Army Staff, appreciate the ICT, the organizers of this uh, summit, for giving us this opportunity. What I have said is just uh, scratching the surface. There will be more, because of time, there will be more during the interactive session. We should be open, we should be frank, and we should have thorough uh, and in depth analysis of all these issues and come up with. Uh, solutions to the problems. After all, this is the 19th summit. Well, I'm fortunate and lucky to attend the 19th summit. The outcome of the first 18, I wouldn't know, and how well the world has implemented them. I thank you all on behalf of the Chief of Army Staff.